AMR is rapidly becoming to Aston Martin what the M car division is to BMW. It's a chance for Aston Martin to bring some of those touches from their race cars to their road cars. And in the year it's been active, we've seen those three little letters added to everything from the Rapid to the Valkyrie. But now it's time to add that badge to the patriarch of the lineup. This is the Aston Martin DB11 AMR. The DB11 AMR will actually replace the standard V12 DB11. From now on, this will be the only V12 coupe version of the DB11 you can get. That may seem a little odd considering the DB11 only launched less than two years ago, but the V8 version saw some serious improvements and the V12 version couldn't be left behind. The differences that have been made to this car may seem small on paper, but they all mount up to quite a big change, allowing this car to leapfrog the V8 and once again become the flagship of the DB11 line. So for starters, the bushings on the rear subframe have been stiffened, and what that does is slightly reduce the wallowiness you used to have on turning in the car. It doesn't change the softness of the suspension, nothing has been changed there, it still has that GT feel, but it's a bit more truer coming through the corner when at the edge of grip. To match that added stability at the rear, the front anti-roll bar has been stiffened up as well. Now the increase is only half a millimeter, which may sound a tiny amount, but it's just the sprinkle needed to dial out some of that numbness the car could feel on turn-in. It also gives the illusion of a shorter wheelbase on the car, making it feel smaller through the turns, which is great because in every other respect, this car still feels huge. And it's something you notice when you first get in a DB11. It feels so big, the bonnet just curves off into infinity. You can't really tell where the car ends at all, so any added agility on the steering is hugely welcome, helping you place this car in tight turns. The software in the car has been updated to deal with the new setup, and crucially, the traction control system has been completely reprogrammed. Instead of now snatching the power away and dumping it back on you, it more gradually takes it away and feathers it back in when you need it, making it less visible as a driver aid and definitely more helpful when pushing the envelope. There's 30 more horsepower available, bringing the total up to 630, and the zero to 60 time has been brought down by a chunk to 3.5 seconds. The exhaust note has been tweaked, and even through those twin turbos, when you have it in sport mode, it sounds pretty tasty. There are a few touches in the looks department that set the AMR aside from the car it replaces. Exposed carbon touches here and there, darker headlights and smoky rears, darker grille, and an equally dark theme on the interior, here offset by a striking lime stripe that matches the calipers. The biggest change to the interior is the racing steering wheel, which definitely makes the car feel more like a sports car than a GT when you grab hold of it. That paired with the gorgeous feeling shift paddles that make changing gear yourself really engaging and you end up with a car that feels like it's ready to ditch the cross-continent travel for a day at the track. So what we get now is the best incarnation of the DB11 to date. It's still incredibly comfortable as a GT car, but that bit more accomplished as a sports car when you want it to be a bit more aggressive and reliable when you want to push it. <laughs> and that's a good thing, with cars like the Bentley Continental GT and the McLaren 570 GT breathing down Aston Martin's neck for that title of king of the GT cars, this car had to be perfect. And now, it's closer to being it. So what this AMR does is dial out some of the gripes I had with the original DB11, improved handling and added more power, and arguably created the car the DB11 should have been from the start. But. It's here now, so let's enjoy it.